made for 12 years talking about areas of what I'm enjoying today. But if you missed that lesson, you can watch this recording. I would have the lesson, uh, if you have the notes, for call up, that would be helpful. These two warm up questions are on the warm up sheet you hopefully have had in class. Uh, we already gave my class a few minutes to look through them, so if you need to pause and play, you can. Number one, Jason reads 126 pages in six hours. Joe reads 115 pages in five hours. How many more pages per hour does Joe read? So there's some keywords in there, class. Per hour. More. How many more, which means I need to? Subtract. Can I subtract them as they are, though? No. Yes, ma'am. I need to figure out how many pages per hour. So that actually tells me how to set it up. I don't want to figure out how much they are in six hours or five hours. I want to first figure out how much it is one hour. One hour. Very good. But again, this tells me what I'm going to do over what pages per hour means I'm going to do pages per hour. That's how I would set it up. Okay, so looking at Jason first, I would put what over what? Uh, 26 over 26. Over 6. And I need to get that down to um, how much? 6. If I want to do per hour, I need to get that down to one hour. So how do I get there? By dividing by six. Divide by six. Did y'all already do that, or do y'all need someone to do that now? Okay, Neil, what did you get? Twenty-one. Y'all agree? Yeah. I agree as well. Okay, so that's for Joe, or no, no, for Jason. I need to do Joe, and I'm going to do the same rate. That's pages per hour. For Joe, it's what over what? It would be? Um, 115 over. Five. Very good. And I need to get that down to one. one. So I need to divide by five. five. Divide by five. 23. We got 23. Yes. So have I answered my question? No. no. Not quite yet. I still need to figure out how many more. So I need to oh, subtract. subtract 21. Yes. Take away from 23. I get? So two. Two. More pages. Is there a question? Is there a question? Okay. All right. Uh, the next one. What are the values of point X and point Y? Neither one of those has a number on them, so we're trying to split a number for them. Okay. Uh, Malik, what did you get? Very good. Negative 8 and 1 half, or you could do negative 8 to 1 to 5. Very good. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Sammy, what did you get for y? Negative 7.5 or negative 7.5. Okay, what was the tricky part on here? If it's the left and right, it's to group. It's like flip because it is to group. I mean, it, it is, is negative. negative. Very good. So that means like 0 is over here, and I can do. As I move away, that helps because if I see negative seven, I bet some people got tripped up and might have put negative eight point five for a while. But hopefully now. Okay, so um, I will collect those if you want me to, and I'll hold those until tomorrow. If not, I'm just um, for those of y'all who did do the triangle homework, were there any questions? Oh, no. Yes. Uh, okay. Let's just review while people are looking over it. Uh, what does Miss Lyles like to see on every single one of her geometry? I like the FSS and F stands for formula, then substitute and solve. So, which triangle? Who remembers the formula for the triangle? Uh, thank you, Kristen, for your chance. A equals one half of B times A. Very good. And class, let's review those letters. A stands for area. A stands for area. So one half means one half. B stands for base. A stands for height. height. What might be true about the base and the height of the triangle? Mm. There's one specific thing. The base and the height have to be what to each other. Not parallel. It's another keyword. Perpendicular. Perpendicular. And what does it mean to be perpendicular? They have to make what kind of an angle? A right angle. So, does the base always have to be on the bottom? No. No, because if I look at question number two, is there something on the bottom? There's a point on the bottom. But couldn't I do like a rotation situation? No. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So then I have a base right here. And the height has to be what again? It has to be perpendicular. So it has to be straight up and down. So 
that's how they use the base of five and the height of seven. Okay? That same rule applies to parallelogram. The height had to be straight up and down. And it's going to happen today with our trapezoid. And the height always has to be perpendicular to the base. Okay? Um, again, we are talking about the craft course. I'm not going to record this activity. Um, I'm going to sort of get into the notes, but before we do, I want to review what it means to be a trapezoid. If you remember, I did like a little family tree thing, quadrilateral. There's a few ways to talk the quadrilateral. There are parallelograms, there are parallelograms, and then there are trapezoids. Does anyone remember what the difference was between the two? Very good. Okay, so let me draw those shapes for each one. So a parallelogram, there's many varieties of them. Okay, I'll pretend that's a word. Uh, trapezoid. Parallelograms have two, two sets of parallel sides. I don't know why someone's talking parallel sides. Where trapezoids only have trapezoids only have one set of parallel sides. There's the Okay? So like in here, I see this is parallel to this. I see this is parallel to this. Okay, and this one is at the top and bottom or the sides that are parallel? Yeah. The sides are parallel. The top and bottom eventually would run into each other. Okay, they're not perpendicular, but they would eventually intersect if I extended those off. So when it comes to trapezoids, let's go ahead and look at our star chart and put our finger on the star chart where we see this trapezoid formula. Again, fingers on chart, on the actual chart. You have to put the chart on top in order to put your finger on it. This is really convenient. All right, what do we notice about that, uh, that, that formula? Or right, will you read it for me real quick? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In parentheses, mm -hmm. one, one, five, Okay, that's a whole bunch of subjects. There's a bunch yeah. of all that. Would that be used to the power of one? Uh, it would not be to the power of one. That is called a uh, subscript versus a superscript, which is not important to know. What it's saying is that there's going to be two bases in the trapezoid, base one and base two. So while we're looking at this, uh, the things that I highlighted in purple on the trapezoid, those are the bases. The bases always have to be the parallel sides. Okay? I cannot say the ones that intersect, those will never be the bases. The bases in a trapezoid always have to be what to each other? Okay, let's get more than a joke out. The bases in a trapezoid have to be parallel. Okay? It does not matter which one is base one or base two, as long as they are the parallel sides. Okay? Yes, sir. Is it base two shape and height and not the left? Correct. Okay? So let's go ahead and jump into some practice. Uh, with trapezoids, you can solve it in probably like three different ways. I'm going to show you those ways. Ones are you're probably more likely to lean toward one than the other. Okay, so um, again, I'm not going to focus too much on how they got the formula. I'm going to show you real quick, but it's not, it's a little weird, so we just look at it. All right, so what it says here is a parallelogram can be decomposed and be broken down into two congruent trapezoids. Congruent means the same, two same, two equal trapezoids. And that's what they showed here. They took one trapezoid and then they rotated and put it on the other, and together those two make a not a rectangle now. They may say parallelogram. But again, I don't want that whole parallelogram. I want I want only how much of it? Half of it. Okay, so we're gonna sort of go through one of the methods we use today, take her through that parallelogram and then break it down the trapezoid. But that's how we got the formula. Okay? Um, but when I break that down, I think the bases have to be what? You just said the bases have to be parallel to each other. And the height, once we remember about the height of a shape, it always has to be, the height has to be perpendicular. That height has to make a 90 degree angle. So let's look at this first example, method one for solving for a trapezoid. Um, it says to duplicate the trapezoid, so make a copy of the trapezoid upside down to make a parallelogram. 
Okay, so I have a trapezoid right here. I'm going to duplicate it and rotate it. Okay. So how much are you going to do it? I'm going to make this base point and I'm going to put it up top here. How long is this base point? Let's count. It's seven. So I'm going to extend this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Go with this. Okay, this base, I'm going to put it down here. How long is that? Three. So one, two, three. And then I'm going to do a really good job of drawing a straight line. Okay. Do we see how that's sort of the same graph where it's split? Okay. But together, all together, it is a parallelogram. And so, hey, do y'all remember how to find the area of a parallelogram? If you don't, where is it located? Yeah, on the third part. So let's start with that parallel. Then what's the formula? A equals B. Very good. So let's substitute in some values. Can I figure out the base length of that parallelogram? Yeah. What is it? What is the whole base length of that parallel? I'll give you a hint. Square root of seven. Okay. Ten. And then the height. The height must be. Okay, and I'm going to go straight up and down. I see that they did this dotted line right here. Yeah, it has to be that perpendicular. How many units tall is this? It is eight units tall. Okay, so together, the area of that whole thing is going to be 80 squared, right? Oh, okay. Units squared. But I want to find the trapezoid. How many trapezoids are there? Those two. There's two, and I only want one of them, so I need to find half of it. Okay, so the area would be, the area of the one trapezoid would be 40 units square. square. Okay, 40 square units square. That is a way to do it. I understand that a lot of y'all probably won't do this method because it's one of your top cases, but it's a way if it works for you. Heads up, please. Oh, don't you just, oh, you have to draw, you have to draw it? Uh, you would probably want to. Um, when you do it, if you did this method. I'm going to show you two other ways to do it. Again, I think this is probably the least common, but if it works for you, it works for you. Again, I'm going to go ahead and skip because I want to get through all three methods to make sure you have practice time, so I'm going to go to the next page. If you want to pause and do that one on your own, okay, but with the recording, I'm going to move on. All right, uh, method two, it says to break down the trapezoid. What do y'all see as a breaking it down into? I see it's not a square, it's a rectangle and where are those states? Right triangles. Do you all agree with that? Uh -huh. okay. mm -hmm. So, could I find the area of one, all three of them, and then what would I do at the end? Add them all up. Add them all up. Let's, we can absolutely do that. Okay, so let's start with a rectangle. Okay, what's the formula for a rectangle? Okay, substitute in our value. The base of that rectangle is 6, thank you Daniel, and our height of that rectangle is 5 times 5. So therefore the area would be 30. Again, is that the whole thing or just part of it? Just part of it. Okay, I still need to do the triangle. So, what do you notice about those triangles? They have the same base, and then, so like, could I put them together and make one big triangle? Okay. It doesn't matter uh, as long as you make sure, like, if you do each one separately, you would multiply it by two, or if you wanted to do one big triangle. I'm going to do one big triangle. I'm going to combine it. Okay. Um, so, if I combine those two. What's the formula for the triangle? A equals Very good. Either one is fine. I'm going to do the one that's on the start part. One half B H. Substituting my values. A equals. I'm going to go ahead and do that one half. The base. Be careful. What is the whole base one? How did you get six together? On both sides. Very good. So that's going to be six. And how tall is that triangle? Five. Okay, I would not combine the height because it's not getting any taller. It is getting wider when I combine the two, but it's not getting any taller. So that height is going to stay five. Okay, so I can solve it now. Uh, can I go ahead and get 
rid of that fraction? Yeah. yeah. Kristen, how can I get rid of the fraction? Wait, um, how do we get this or the living? Again, so there's three on this side and three on the other side. I'm putting them oh. together to make six. Not like this, ma'am? That is one way to do it. Uh, what's another way that I could have done it? How can I get rid of that fraction of the first step? Sorry? Um, you could just, uh, do half of I could do half of the six. Whatever floats your boat, because when I take half of the six, that gives me three and three times five is 15, which is exactly what Alice said. So whichever one works for you, I personally like getting rid of a fraction first. I like doing half of six. I'm stretching the book out and replacing it with three. And then I'm going to put the area is equal to 15. Okay? Um, inches squared. So is my answer 15 inches squared? No. No, I still need to add the both parts. So 30 plus 15 would give me 45 inches squared. Okay? So that's a different method. I think I'm more inclined to use that one than flipping. On the other one, but again, that's my personal. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. No, you could. Yeah. So, um, I did the other method. Yeah. But then I didn't draw the picture and, you know, the question line of Okay, so just make sure because that is absolutely a common mistake, and I will absolutely put that as an answer point where you don't want to have to because I know that's the most common mistake. Okay, do y'all want to try number four on your own? I'll be ready to go. go. All right, again, lots of drop for math. I love that. You'll find a good start. A equals B base for that rectangle. Lots of good stuff on there. The base was 6, and the height was to give me an area of 54. Awesome. Okay, the triangle gave us a little bit of grief, but we sort of got there with some help. Uh, I'm going to start with the triangle formula, which is A equals 1 half B. Very good. Now I need to figure that out. I'm going to go ahead and write down that one half for your foot is because that's the biggest mistake, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, the base length, no, 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 no. The height, though, the height of the triangle, does that change at all? No. No, that height is still, it's still not very good. But how do I figure out the base length? All right, what do we see? Yeah, like at the now three. Okay, so let me translate that a little bit so what you're off, right? That's all five computation. This six is the same thing as that six. If the whole thing is ten and this chunk is six, what's left to make up that ten? Four. Okay, a lot of people were saying three is four. So it's one half. I, I don't know why we're talking. The base is four times the height of nine. So again, you can multiply and then divide by two, or you can get rid of that fraction. Now, or where do you have to get rid of that fraction? I could do one half of four or nine, which do you think is easier? Probably four. What's one half of four, Joshua? Two. Great. Love it. Okay, class two times nine is 18. What do I still need to do? Add them together. When I add them, I get 72.
Does it matter which one's which? No, I can put 11 plus 14 or 14 plus 11. It's going to give me the same thing. My height is my height is my height is eight. Okay, something oh. that is perpendicular to the same as feet. Okay, order of operations says I need to do what part first? The grouping. The grouping. That's right. That's what you say. Same. Very good. So 11 plus 14 class is Five. 25. I'm going to copy everything else down. I'm leaving 25 in the parentheses, but I still need to solve. Would y'all rather find one half or something or do 25? Come on. Really what do I do half of? Half of? Uh, eight. 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 I mean, you could, but do you want it that small? Yeah. Just one. Two. You pick your pick. Okay. One half of eight is four. four. What's four times twenty-five? One hundred. Can I do oh, can I do this to not use my To not use my strategy? Yeah. I mean, they're all my strategies. Just don't use them all. So. Yeah. yeah. I do like this one the best. All right. So. I do like this one the best because it's yeah. one formula. I don't have to worry about adding at the end. It's one straightforward thing. Whichever one works for you. If you like breaking it down like the ones above, go for it. If you like flipping the tax code, go for it. Okay, but it's let's do one thing. on your own. Don't do six using that formula. Ready, set, go. Okay, the last one, of course, you have one of those is high key ones. Uh, Trapezoid has an area. It gives me the area, and it's one of those tall backwards ones. What do I start with no matter what? The formula. The formula. Okay, let's say it out loud. What's that formula? A. Thank you. 